Let me talk about the uh, human perspective, seeing, understanding via multimodal sensing. And as you know, so we have many smartphones and we can extract the information via dialogues. How do I get tumor from Kindle? Like a system can respond to our questions, our request based on that the knowledge in the uh, internet or knowledge database. And gradually the dialogue system is stepping into the internet of things uh, sensing data and uh, we have more rich uh, conversation can be done. And in the next, like, uh, okay, robot um, system itself is, uh, they can hear, they can see, they can speak, okay, they can walk and they can dance. So why not let's have much rich conversation freely? This is a concept. And uh, what is a human machine interaction? This is a, uh, I'm doing to take care of the greens and do next to me, the robot is pulling the water to greens. And if he can recognize I'm falling in trouble, so he act proactively asked me, it's too high for you, do you need help? So definitely I said, yes, please, please take it down. This conversation can be done if the system can understand what's going on surrounding us. But when we would like to build such a system to communicate with humans and machines, first of all, humans understand the scenes using natural language. So in that case, machine it's themselves needs to understand scenes using uh, language itself. This is because their understanding is based on numerics and that cannot work for humans. So we need to let the systems understand scenes using natural language. And finally, we can communicate together. And here is an example. And a robot and a humans talk. And the man said, that's a cool robot. When he looked at the two robots and his mind uh, landing a shape, the uh, robot is uh, cool. So in this machine case, robot just sensing the information and trying to output sensing information that it's numerics, it doesn't work. So in that case, we really need semantic understanding. And that is a video description. So here, the system recognized two robots. One is the humanoid type and the other one is land type. But still that cannot be respond to the uh, men's input. So the system needs to understand the scenes and also the system needs to respond to counterparts uh, speech. So in that case, uh, which one, the humanoid or the round one? So that question is better to respond. So if we would like to build such a system, we need the spoken language understanding and also multimodal C understanding. In addition, we have to uh, generate, uh, create the response generation mechanism. So let me talk about the history of, of artificial intelligence research. We have a domain, the speech recognition or dialogue management and the computer vision. So this is the first uh, uh, generation of AI boom. At the beginning, okay, so speech recognition field. So first of all, we have to think about uh, features, what types of features is good for uh, speech recognition, Capstrom as proposed, and the sequential uh, decoding needs to be done. So B-type algorithm, beam search was proposed. And the most uh, promising uh, invention is noisy channel model. So then we can gradually recognize phony and the word sequence and to the target could be the speech command, isolated word to uh, sequential word, word sequence, like a newspaper leading speech. And in the computer vision, uh, so this is a computer vision field. I don't have to step in the detail, but uh, extracting 3D information about solid object from 2D is a mainly target in this era. So the second AI boom, Actually for the speech recognition, acoustic model is the uh, most important thing and the hidden mark model is very promising approach to apply and the weighted finite state transducer decoding uh, long linguistic model and acoustic models uh, based network. So we can get the better performance and the target becomes a much bigger, you know, broadcast news, large vocabulary speech recognition. And, uh, 
more step in that uh, much more difficult uh, acoustic uh, signals like a call home, like a spontaneous speech or lecture speech. So when we think about the neural network, so first uh, lecturer talked about the neurophysiology things. So people believe that the uh, neural network in our brain can help the system mechanisms to recognize things. And in Japan, uh, Professor Fukushima proposed the uh, neocongruent neutron for handwriting. So that works very good. And this research gave uh, impact to the speech field. So time delay neural network was proposed by Professor Bible. And, uh, but still ATM was too strong and the neural network not applied. But this uh, TDNN gave an impact to the convolutional neural network that is the two dimensions The TDNN was expanded to build the 2D uh, information signals here. And then, so right now we have the break for the uh, neural network. Suddenly 10% of errors are reduced by deep neural network based acoustic models. The systems becomes a hybrid. So acoustic models are deep neural network, but the decoding part is a WFST based decoder. And then, so sequence to sequence model for machine translation was proposed by uh, Professor Cho. So that was a really great impact in the field of speech. We can build the speech recognition end to end uh, for mass format. So that is great. And in the field of computer vision, of course, object recognition and the semantic segmentation and the video captions and uh, many action recognitions are uh, investigated. And uh, task variation is really exploded. Uh, static image and uh, video processing is targeted. So, but still all of the, you know, uh, the network is a convolutional neural network. And uh, this is a third era of third generation where I boom. And when we think about the dialogue, so actually dialogue was built as a handcrafted uh, system, but handcrafted is limited. To, so people start to uh, think about how to build the statistical approach for the dialogue system. And now end to end dialogue system is uh, uh, intensely worked by many researchers. Okay, let me talk about the handcrafted uh, scenario here. That is a uh, uh, FST based uh, dialogue systems uh, stayed in the arcs and we can change the state to uh, output the responses based on the state. But that is uh, uh, human needs to write this network and the really tedious work for this one. So we implemented the Enneagram based uh, dialogue system. So we annotated all of the data. So, and then we can generate this type of network. So statistical models for the guide action simulator and the hotel clock simulators. So rule based one is a left side, very simple. But when we analyze the human conversation is networks looks like that and it is too much. So when we would like to scale up the training data, actually annotation is too much. So we need to uh, minimize the effort for the uh, manual labeling uh, efforts. So that's the reason why people start to think about the end to end framework and the deep neural network models uh, with continuous state space can allow us uh, to build the system without uh, human annotations. So in 2014, sequence to sequence model was uh, proposed like this. And I believe that people uh, should know this uh, framework. And then, so Google, so Binio proposed the uh, 
neural network conversation system that is whatever uh, system says, people say the system can uh, output in response to user's input. So this is a really promising result. And uh, we decided, okay, end to end framework works for the dialogue. And we collected the data from the uh, customer service. And uh, we try to generate the system response using the uh, data set training data by collecting the uh, Twitter data. And we learn the challenge sentence to sentence generation task. So, most surprisingly, we didn't give, give any domains into the system, but system automatically detects that, okay, this is a uh, McDonald's, this is a uh, Honda's car issues, like uh, all of, you know, system needs to uh, the target and the words are selected based on that uh, domain. So, we didn't give that the explicit uh, topic or domains, but the system automatically learned about the, uh, such information automatically. And then, so we are working on multimodal seeing our interaction. This is a milestones. First of all, our target is seeing understanding based on navigation, follow silver car turning right. And that is, uh, we have to build. The first of all, uh, we needed to build the neural dialogue systems. And then, of course, the system needs to understand surroundings. Video description technology is required. And after all, we combined two systems into the audio visual scene aware dialogue. And finally, we can build scene aware interaction systems for the future cap navigation. And the system is uh shown as shown in this figure so microphone camera sliders multimodal sensing information input in the end to end system the system has a function for the attentional multimodal fusion for each uh, signals and uh, seeing understanding and a natural gel language generation is simultaneously processed in the neural network to generate the responses. And uh, this is a, you know, actually the demo system from our side. So this is uh, mainly based on the computer vision features here. So, but uh, So I think uh, I cannot broadcast the speech synthesis here. Text to speech is generated. So the warning is output as a speech. And then, so that is a more, we have an interaction here. So I cannot uh, broadcast the audio. It is um, meaningless to go play this one. Let me play this one here. So here is the features we have used is a uh, uh, bounding box based object recognition first, and then semantic region segmentation was done. And the uh, most important thing is uh, we needed to track the object bounding box tracking was done here. And uh, the difficulty is uh, actually when we try to explain the scenes, we need to understand the object localization. So the bicycle is uh, uh, behind the cars or uh, behind the peoples. So this type of things needs to be localized, but unfortunately, uh, the 2D image cannot uh, give us uh, such information accurately. So in this case, we would like to show that multimodal feature ex uh, extraction for a mobile mapping system that is uh, point clouds is captured with 2D images. So the system can give us the point cloud view and the top down map and also original video like uh, to the images. We can align the uh, point cloud view to original views. Finally, we can localize the building is located where. So, and then we can build the dialogue system on top of these informations. The problem, 
not exactly structured. I was just shocked. I, it was my first time to work in that uh, uh, visual information. So every frame has a different bounding box. So it means that we really needed to uh, track the object. That uh, issue is very huge to be solved. And if we can solve all of uh, technologies, so we can build the surveillance camera systems to recognize, okay, suspicious actions near the station, like uh, even we have 2000 cameras, the system understand what's going on. And uh, of course we can build the dialogue system, like uh, instruction videos to show that one and to get uh, many kinds of things we can do that for this domain. And uh, so from here, I would like to talk about that the technical portion for that one. So sequence to sequence models. Uh, so that is a machine translation target, LST the TM encoder decoder was pro proposed by Binios and the attention-based encoder decoder was proposed uh, for machine translation uh, and also transformer. And this technology is a uh, current main uh, approaches we are using. And uh, those uh, approaches were widely used for various kinds of tasks, speech recognition, machine translation, language understanding, dialogue, video description. The difference is just input signals and output signals. And uh, finally, I recognized that I have worked on on spoken language processing field. And finally, uh, okay, what types of signals, whatever, I can input to the system so the system can generate sentences. So sentence generation is the target of my research life. So here is the LSTM encoder decoder. So this is uh, actually very famous and uh, the input signal word sequences input, and uh, we try to uh, transfer that the you know, dependency between the uh, previous context to next word. So word by word, we are trying to predict. And then, so attention-based one is, of course, uh, just to rely on the previous word is not enough. So we would like to uh, rely on the, uh, all directions. So, so in that case, attention let us know which uh, word is dependent on which direction. So we can generate much accurate sentences based on this framework. And then transformer. So feed for the network with residual connections and able to learn very deep architectures. So the most important thing is actually we would like to see whole dependency in a sentence or in a context. So that transformer will let us to see the context for full size of the data that is full size of sentence that is very nice to use it. So, and then Large scale pre trained language models for various sequence to sequence tasks in natural language processing. So, I think uh, everybody has already known about the BART and the GPT 3. So, the idea is uh, they collected uh, tons of data from the all possible document to build the language model. And uh, Bad case is a mask language model to detect the surrounding word sequence. And the GPT-3 case is actually that is a simple language model, transformer language model to detect the next word. And uh, GPT-3 proved that the, on the lady, I think uh, social media uh, automatically responds to the human's input, but the system can accurately respond to the, um, the, the chat in the chat and the people believe that that is not since that is humans. Right? And uh, when we applied this uh, large scale uh, Plato in the language model, we need to uh, tune the parameters uh, you, using the target data. So fine tuning is required for that, that training. So it seems like uh, 
it's a kind of breakthrough to apply this one to uh, enhance the performance, especially GPT-3 has the power to uh, handle the machine translation or dialogue or speech recognition. Uh, many domains are covered and actually they didn't do input the explicit task in there, but the system automatically judged that it is uh, machine translation and to the system generate the uh, target language translation results. Okay, so, and then, so I started to work on the multimodal understanding and finally semantic representation needs to be uh, trained using audio, video and the text features to improve the performance uh, by cooperating with uh, multimodal features. And uh, this is a video description uh, which was proposed uh, in 2014 and a very simple um, the convolution neural network feature is extracted and input into the encoder and the decoder generates the sentences. That is a fundamental framework for the video description. But uh, when we see this uh, framework, actually computer vision guys are uh, focused on the visual feature only. When we try to apply our technology to the real world, we need the audio features as well. So. Let me talk about uh, why audio features are important. So this is a scene of the object of recognition and uh, sentence generation for the scene. First of all, image and localization features uh, will let us know objects and their relations. So in that case, girl and hill. So that will let us know a girl is standing on a hill. And then she is jumping. So this is a special temporal features, motion and action, and we can generate a girl is jumping. So the third one is uh, a girl is sitting on the hills and look over the sky to see the airplane. And the image and the localization features can generate this sentence, but airplane is gone. And uh, suddenly the sentence is, a girl is sitting on the hill, but that the description is not right. So how to generate the original sentence? So still we can find the sound here. So when we combine the visual features, audio features, and audio feature can be considered as a part of uh, features. Actually, we can generate a girl who is looking over the sky at an airplane flying overhead. So this sentence can be generated. So multimodal fusion uh, has been already you know, studied in the research field. So long standing area of research, how to combine information from multimodalities for machine perception. So in 1998, Beijing adaptation approaches were proposed and the stream weights uh, was also proposed, but uh, neural network has been already investigated and uh, all of the informations are uh, combined into the one network. So I think as the first to uh, fuse multimodal information using attention between modalities and neural network uh, in our research. And then the idea is very simple. We have the you know, modality one and modality two to combine together. And uh, normally we just join to a naive manner. And we, oh, sorry, we can pay attention to the temporal attention and to generate sentences. That is a naive fusion of modalities. And then we can expand to this idea to wait between the uh, each modality. In our cases, audio and visual features we have, and we pay attention to between two modalities. And we can generate sentences of wide sequence based on uh, selectively attends to specific modalities. And uh, that is actually samples. And I would like to let you guys to listen to the sounds, but unfortunately I cannot broadcast the audio 
So the first one is actually visual information is very strong to generate the monkey poo's uh, dog's tail. But uh, when we have the VGG and the C3D, still we have uh, you know, multimodal tension between two modalities, the performance is better. And when we listen to the uh, onion, cutting the onion on the peeling onion, actually the system recognizes the sound of peeling to add more uh, weights to the walls. The system can generate a woman is peeling an onion. The problematic things for the YouTube video, look at this one is uh, lighting a whole scenes, but the music is, uh, you know, the background, they have the uh, music. So country music in there. So in that case, if the lighting whole scene always had the country music, there is a strong contribution support to uh, show that the lighting horses, but uh, not always. So in that case, that is a kind of noise for the information. So that is the most difficult part. And the other one is, so this one is actually, you know, he is playing the violin like a guitar and the system cannot recognize uh, without multimodal attention. First, we just using a visual information. A man is standing. So actually this is singing. That is microphone is strongly uh, recognized to support this uh, uh, sentence. And but when we use the audio features, suddenly the system say that a man is playing a guitar, but still there is no attention between two uh, modalities. There is no way to find the violin and the guitar. Seems like when we uh, apply the multimodal attention, the system can generate the guitar. So a man is playing violin. That is very cool when we built that one. So attention modality fusion works very good to generate sentences. And we analyzed what types of words are weighted by each uh, modality. So when we see the object recognition features, uh, we have a ball, pen, lesbian, almost none uh, are well recognized. And the motion part is uh, recognized by the C3D features. And uh, we applied the uh, uh, MFCC for the audio features. And uh, the, when we see the weight between, you know, other visual modality and audio modality, actually, you know, audio features has a slightly light ma, not slightly ma, that is 0 0.34 means that uh, drastically changed. The visual is much more strong uh, powers and audio features is supporting a part of uh, word seconds. Looks like a, you know, talking, Sean playing, singing. So sound related, the action which has a sound, uh, those are words uh, recognized by all the features. And uh, now let me move on to the next step. So if we can recognize scenes using a multimodal features, the next step is a uh, dialogue audio visual scene area dialogue. This uh, research target is uh, actually, we collaborated with Georgia Tech. So they have already worked on the visual QA. So static image, they are let the people to ask questions and answer answers uh, to respond to the static images. And uh, but still, that is a static image based question answering. And we would like to work on the video features. So we extend their framework to the uh, audio visual scene area dialogue. A video is input, and the people start to discuss about the videos. And we have to generate responses, answers to humans' questions. And then uh, audiovisual scene area dialogue is uh, collected based on that the two uh, humans uh, dialogue. So one questioner cannot watch the full video and the answerer can watch the full video. And uh, a woman is seen uh, snuggling up to her laptop. She starts taking a sip of coffee and begins closing her laptop, that is a scene description. 
machine script. And but you know, actually Asla knows about the video and the script. But question I don't know about. The question I just ask a question to figure out what's going on in there. After question answering, 10 question answering, the questioner needs to generate the summary of the events in the videos. So it means that questioner needs to collect more information in that videos. And this is uh, the result. So 10 tons of the question answering and uh, they can figure out the question and figure out what's going on in the videos. And uh, we are trying to generate the responses based on the context of the dialogue and uh, questions. So we can have the, we can have the target, two targets here, my sentence selection or sentence generation. The task for the sentence selection is a, a kind of information retrieval framework. So we, uh, we prepare the multiple answers and do, we select the best answers from the multiple answers. That is uh, the task. But uh, the problematic thing is uh, my difficulty depends on how to prepare the multiple candidates. If the candidates itself is very different and easy to uh, select. So in that case, uh, task can be a uh, very easy task. And the sentence generation case, uh, so speech recognition and a machine translation framework is applied. And uh, the difficulty is determined by the perplexity based uh, entry of the word sequence. And the uh, answer generation itself is depend on language model. So if language model is uh, trained to question answering tightly, that is limited to only to the uh, text in the training data. So we needed to figure out the difficulty for the, each uh, task. And uh, in our case, AVSD, we have two kinds of um, uh, tasks in there. And uh, let me describe the mainly sentence generation part. So when we see the distribution of the word sequence in the ABSD, so questions in mainly, does he, does see this is action related to uh, questions and to what does he see, what does he, that is also action recognition, but some of them are object, you know, what is this uh, none was asked by the humans. And to some of the questions are related to the audio. So, and the ABSD sentence length is a little bit longer than other question answering systems. So here is a baseline of multimodal dialogues. So first of all, so audio visual features input that is a video description power is embedded in the systems. And also question needs to be in there. And the context needs to be considered. Okay, what types of uh, question answering has been already done and the context has been already embedded. And uh, based on that, the history question uh, needs to be understood. So this is a framework. And also uh, we have a script and uh, summaries given by questioners. So that is, those of them are describing the scenes. We would like to expand the text knowledge. So we uh, input the descriptions into the systems. So that is uh, the challenge was done uh, in 2018. And the 2019, that is Dialogue System Technology Challenge 7 and 8. And uh, so Biolin Prot shows that how much uh, the system can generate the good uh, systems. Number five shows that the, uh, the size of the balloon is uh, uh, the number of right answers in the five. So left to bar showed that the uh, differences and others are systems input. 
So in 2018, most of the system is very poor. It is very hard to compete with the human result. But uh, one year later, suddenly the system performance is really great, almost comparable with humans. So the reason why such a thing happened, so let me describe. So those of challenge actually we published the journals, special issues, you can find the papers in the journals to see. And this is DSTC8 uh, best systems. Actually, I'm very shocked. So everything is embedded into the systems. So transformer was applied and uh, the audio video sequence modeling, caption language modeling and lens response language modeling, everything is uh, put into one neural network to transformer and generate sentences. And that is the best systems. So it seems like if we have the video description, we can generate answers accurately. But unfortunately, so in their use case, we don't have the video descriptions, manual video descriptions. We cannot input such a good information in there. So in that case, we needed to have a power to transfer the uh, neural network, which have been already trained using a description and questions. So that is the right side, teacher network. And we jointly trained the network, student network, which doesn't have the description and the questions. So definitely student network uh, cannot use the descriptions, but they need to get the comparable performance using the description. So student teacher like right, framework is required to embed the video description power in the dialogue systems. And then, so this year, uh, we are organizing a third edition of audiovisual scenario dialogue challenge at DSTCGN. So the idea is, uh, okay, answer generation cannot use the video description manual video description, don't use the manual description, just use the audio visual feature to generate the sentences. At least we can get the question answering history. We can apply that the information in there, but video description power needs to be embedded in the different manner. So, and then we finally recognize uh, there is no reason to generate that answers uh, Sometimes, uh, you know, audio features, visual features, we don't know which uh, segment is uh, contributed to that, the answers. So it means that uh, we need to figure out answer reasoning temporal localization. So, and then we can rely on that, okay, this answer is not generated based on that, that language model that is more, you know, feature driven uh, event detection has been uh, implemented in the systems. So now we are collecting the data. Data is uh, uh, manual data annotation was done. So we let the people to watch the videos and the people try to read the question answering. What actions are taken by boy? So when we see the videos, a boy is riding, looking at the grass and holding it and drinking a glass of orange juice. And also he is singing a song from 10 to 20 sec. So the answer is the boy is riding and singing and then drinks a glass of orange juice. All of events need to be supported by the evidences. So, the humans need to find the event the boy is writing in the net notebook. So from two sec to 20, that is a, a visual features. And the boy is drinking from the grass from 30 to 40, that is a visual features. And also the final question is, evidence is the boy singing rock music, 10 to 20 sec, so audio features. Those of things are annotated. And we can use those data to train the models and to detect the evidence to generate the audience answers. And here is a schedule. So right now we open the answer generation data release and June 30th, we are going to reasoning temporal localization data. 
and do, let's start to train the model to submit the systems uh, uh, in September. We can have the uh, workshop in January and February. So please come to join us. Okay, thank you very much.